Today we are going to do some exercises to improve your freehand drawing skills. So as an architect, drawing is one of the most important skills that we must have. And I know most of you guys ask, do I have to be good at drawing in order to go to architectural school? And my answer to that is still no. You don't have to be good at drawing, but school will be much easier if you did know how to draw even just a little bit. That is why in this video, I'm going to show you guys some of the practice strokes and drawing techniques that help me improve my freehand sketching abilities really fast. First writing tool we are going to use is the pencil. For the first exercise, we are going to practice our straight lines. So let's go ahead and divide our short bond into two. For the left half, we are going to do vertical lines and then the other half, we are going to do horizontal lines. Now go super slow at first and make it as straight as you possibly could. Okay, so a technique that I found is very useful is to keep my fingers and wrists as steady as possible and drag down with my arm, like so. I also like to rest the side of my palm and my pinky finger on the paper and just let it drag. The friction between the paper and my hand lets me control my strokes better. Also, don't press down too hard on the pencil like you're strangling a mini giraffe or something. Just relax your fingers enough just to provide a firm grip, but not so relaxed that you end up with your pencil flying up your nose or something horrible like that. <laughs> Once you're done with the vertical lines, proceed with the horizontal ones. So just do this until you fill up the bond paper and then do it again tomorrow. Don't overdo it guys, drawing is supposed to be fun. We need to do it just enough to incrementally increase our skills. Slowly but surely guys. You know, this way we won't get bored and hate drawing lines for the rest of eternity. Okay. Now, do this same exercise again by drawing diagonal lines going in alternate directions. Down to up, then up to down. Now, don't cheat guys like placing your paper in an angle so it's much easier. This is supposed to be hard. Remember, nothing worth having comes easy. And it's okay to really be bad at first. Even my lines are pretty crooked. I probably need more practice with this diagonal ones. <laughs> now that we're done with all the straight lines and you never want to see a straight line ever again, we are now going to draw 3D perspective boxes, which are made of more lines. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Don't worry guys, this is going to be so much more fun than those other exercises a while ago. Let's proceed with the drawing. First thing you gotta do is make a horizon line. So this is the line where we will put our vanishing points. For those of you who don't know what vanishing points are, vanishing points are a point somewhere in the horizon where the plane vanishes. I just made it sound like the Bermuda Triangle. Okay, let's, let's just put it this way, guys. For example, you are standing in front of a large infinite wall. When you look to the left, it extends into infinity, but the wall shrinks smaller and smaller as it gets further until it just vanishes because of the phenomenon we call perspective projection. So the point where the wall vanishes is called the vanishing point. The more you know. <laughs> so now on our horizon line, let's draw two vanishing points. Like so. Now. Draw a vertical line somewhere in the middle of that. And now let's draw lines extending from the left vanishing point into our vertical line or V line for short. No, let's, let's not call it a V line. That sounded very wrong. <laughs> anyway, from our other vanishing point, let's draw lines that will meet with the intersection of our vertical line and the lines we drew from the left vanishing point. Now let's just draw two more vertical lines on each side. And boom, we have a cube thingy. All we have to do is outline our cube and we're done. Now you guys could go all crazy and add windows on your cube or maybe a roof, but that's the basic principle of how to draw two-point perspectives. But if you guys want to be all super extra and cool like me, not really forget, forget that I said the cool part. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, you guys could throw in an additional vanishing point from below and make it look like a bird's eye view or maybe add a vanishing point from above and make it a worm's eye view. And that is what we call a three-point perspective. Okay, now that you guys have something to brag about to your classmates, let's move on to our next drawing exercise. So by now, I think you guys are sick and tired of drawing lines. 
So for this part, we are going to practice drawing people. Oh man, I'm finally excited to draw something apart from lines. So first thing we are going to do is draw a vertical line. No. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, first thing we are going to do is draw a vertical line. And then we will divide that line into two. Now we are going to draw a tiny oblong about a sixth the length of our original line. So that oblong is going to be the head. After that, we are going to draw a somewhat steep trapezoid thingy on the top and then draw an inverted one on the bottom. So these initial lines will serve as the guidelines when we draw our person. So first thing we are going to draw is the head. Then we'll move on to the right arm. So make sure to draw it with swift and smooth movements. Okay, now that we're done drawing the legs, we are now going to proceed to draw his other arm. But for this other arm, instead of posing him like this, we are going to place his other arm on his waist like so, so that he doesn't look like he's being choked to death with a force choke by Darth Vader. So this is also going to help make our human silhouette look more comfortable. Now don't expect to get this in your first try. It's gonna take a couple of tries, maybe five tries to 10 tries, but once you get it perfect, it's gonna feel super awesome. Once you've mastered drawing male silhouettes, you can now easily make female silhouettes. Just add a skirt and long hair, and boom, you have a woman. If only getting women in real life were, were this easy, huh? <laughs> Anyways, same process goes when you're drawing a kid. Just draw a tiny man and maybe make him hold the woman, and voila, we have a family. So you could experiment with this, like put a hat on your silhouette or pose him differently. And just remember to enjoy doing this. There's, there's really no pressure doing this, guys. So when you're happy with all the results of all of our exercises with a pencil, go and do all of these exercises again with a ball pen and a fine liner. You have to do this because a pencil has a different feel than a ball pen and a fine liner. For me, I find that the pencil feels easier to control when compared to the ball pen because there's more friction between the pencil and the paper rather than the ball of the pen and it's lubricated with ink. I just find the pen a little bit harder to control. So with that said, I guess I'll end the whole video right here, guys. I hope you guys learned something and remember to just enjoy drawing and keep on leveling up. If you guys like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe down below for more architectural content from me, your boy, Leon. I'll see you guys on my next video. Flying peace.